Did I end up getting married? Where did I go? Can I get some hairstyle tips? We're gonna cover all of it today. Hi, I'm Kaylee Melissa, your friendly neighborhood hairstylist, and today I just wanna catch up with y'all. All these questions are from Instagram. They were the most popular ones. I wrote them down, we're gonna cover it today. I thought this would be a fun way to catch back up before I just jump back into hairstyling content because a lot of you guys have been around for years and I feel like I know you and so like, it just felt weird to come in and just like hair stuff and not talk about anything else. So we're gonna cover it today have a little chit chat catch up, and then, you know, we'll get back into all this content that I love to make. So, that being said, let's answer some questions. Okay, Sweep Stitches said, hope you had a lovely wedding, would love to hear about it if you're okay sharing. I would love to share, and also, this was like a third of the questions that I got were about the wedding, and I don't know why I didn't expect people to be like super interested in anymore, but I am so excited that you guys wanna hear about it because I was so heartbroken back in the day that I wasn't at a place to talk about it and like put it on the internet because I wanted to share it with you guys. So, oh my God, I would love a second chance. Um, let me know in the description, nope, the comments, what you guys would wanna see um, because like, I don't know. I don't know what you guys wanna see. I don't know what you guys wanna know. I'm here for all of it. So tell me in the comments and I will use that to inform my future content. All right, I don't know how to say this username. I'm gonna go with Chaliel. Um, wanted to know how is married life going? And honestly, guys, it's been so good. Jenna's an incredible partner. She is just the sweetest little marshmallow human being, but she's also like a very fierce like protector and just, she's so good. It's just been so good and so healing and fun and I don't know, I'm just excited to keep going. See how like life continues to take us. Okay, Just Being Becky wants to know, how was your dog? Missed you. I missed you guys too. He's doing so good. Oh my gosh, he is still just the little loviest love bug. He needs at least an hour to two of cuddles every single day. He still has the same energy he had like seven years ago, but he is getting like older and grayer and I'm trying to come to terms with it. He's a little love bug. He makes my whole life better and I don't know. Yeah, he's doing great. And his sister Wrigley is also doing super well. She also just does not act her age. Like they are both just little spry spring chickens. Um, yeah, that's how they're doing. So how regularly will you be posting videos? I would love to talk about this. Okay, so it is gonna be a little slower than it used to be just for now because I wanna scale up and kind of like, just like not burn myself out like right out of the gate. So I'm gonna be posting one big long video on YouTube once a month, and then I'm gonna be posting short content in between. So like on TikTok, Insta, YouTube shorts, obviously. Um, and I'm honestly excited about that because over the years I've had so many ideas that weren't like 10, 20 minute video worthy, and they didn't like stick into anything else easily. So they just never got used. And so now I get to do those videos and I'm really excited about that. And I also like, there have been so many videos that I've seen on TikTok where people are like on the struggle bus with their hair and I've wanted to respond, but like I felt awkward about it because I like wasn't posting yet. So now I get to do that and I'm excited about it. I think it's gonna be fun. But I wanna know from you guys, which platforms are you on the most? Because like hopefully I'm making content for new people and that will be very fun. But like first and foremost, you guys are my people and I wanna make content for you. So let me know like which platforms are you on the most and that is where I will focus my efforts. And I do wanna say that my goal is to scale up. Like my goal is to be posting more long form content on YouTube. I just, when I was doing that weekly before, I had an Anna Laura and an editor and until I can fill those roles, it's it's gonna you know be a little slower because it's just me. And I, I'm okay with that. I hope you guys can like ride this out with me and we will get to like more frequent posting soon, hopefully. I don't know how long, we'll figure it out together. Vale0912 said, by the way, I love your hair in this video. How did you style it? I actually got like several questions about that. So let's have a little hair tutorial moment. We're gonna section our hair first and then brush your section. Keep protectant spray. And then you're just gonna do like your standard loop and pull curl. Um, and I'm gonna put a tutorial on that in the description box. I feel like I've done a few at this point. So I only get like maybe two of those on my hair at its current length. And then once you have like five inches left, you're just gonna do your standard curl. I forgot, you also wanna hold the iron horizontally. 
Sometimes when I demonstrate, I forget things. Let it sit, let it down. And there's generally your curl. So you have like more of a wave here and more of a curl here. And then as I finish each section, I just put this back into its cutie little circle and roll it up. And this is another thing that's important if you want that really flippy curl at the end, because it, it really needs to cool in place, especially if your hair has a hard time holding a curl, necessary. And I'm gonna keep doing this until I get to my bangs, and I'll show you what to do there. I should note that like around the perimeter, so around like your hairline, it's kind of nice to do the kind of classic curl starting a little bit higher up because otherwise then you get mostly wave and then like a little curl at the end and if you do the curl a little higher up then you get more curl next to your face. For those of you who clip your curls up to cool, how do you feel when your hair looks like this? I feel like a little bit of a fancy lady but also like a little insane. Okay so for your kind of face framey, they're not really bangs on me just kind of like shorter face pieces. Um, you could put them together and curl it up and put it on a roller. That just, for me, it doesn't always work out. So I'm gonna do one side and then the other. And I've just been really lazy and not doing a Velcro roller. And it's been working for me. As I'm curling this, I'm pulling it forward, kind of like an antenna, and rolling it back up. And then hold on to it when it comes off the curling iron and clip her in place. And uh, now we let that cool for a little bit and then we can take everything down. Comb through with our fingers. Love this. And then I'm gonna add some hairspray. This is one of my favorites. This is the ColorWow Cult Favorite Hairspray. I've been loving ColorWow. I also use their blow dry mist today. It just gives me like a really nice shine. Spray, spray, spray. And then scrunch. There you go. This is really like a faux blowout that I can get behind. It, it makes me very happy. Okay, let's do some more questions. Okay, now for the one that got asked the absolute most. We've got Amanda Ronaldson asking, where the heck have you been? Been missing all the hair tips and tricks. I mean, if it helps, I've been missing you guys. I, there has not been a single day where I didn't like think about content or think about something that I'd like to do. But to answer your question, um, so there was never like a planned absence. I just had a lot of things in life happen at once, like four or five like life-changing things just right there. And I felt like every time something cycled out, a new thing cycled in. And it was kind of like Lucy in the Chocolate Factory, but with trauma. I just like, it never stopped. And I felt like I couldn't get my footing. It was just, it was so frustrating. I think one of the biggest things I can mention though is that I got COVID in 2022 and um, I do have a history with like chronic viral infection. So I knew if I ever got COVID, it was gonna go badly for me and it did. It turned into pretty intense long COVID. Um, I was kind of stuck in bed, stuck not being able to like really get up and do things for several months. And even after that, it was very slow going. And that was really hard for me. I've struggled with chronic fatigue for a lot of my adult life. And it was just very like triggering to being put back in that spot. Um, I'm doing a lot better. Um, my health has improved quite a bit and I feel a lot closer to normal. So I'm, I'm taking that for the win that it is, but that is why I was gone for a chunk of time. It really kept me away because like I was quite sick, so. Yeah, no fun. Kind of going along with that, TallyGood03 asked, how has your mental health been? And um, that is the other thing that really kept me away. I, between like all of the life stuff that was happening and undiagnosed OCD, I was just spiraling like further and further down. But I will say that I have now been diagnosed with OCD and I'm going through therapy for that and that has helped so, so much. I do eventually want to do a video where I talk about OCD and what it actually is because it's, so different than it is in like movies or TV and it's so much more intense and it can affect anything in your life. It's not just about being clean or neat. Mine isn't at all. I will say like the condensed version is that like with OCD you have like this worst case scenario that enters your brain and it's terrifying. Whatever it is, it's like deeply unsettling um, and it could be something you're afraid is going to happen or something you're afraid is true and it doesn't leave you alone. Like you might be able to push it away for a little while, but then it comes back and it just keeps coming back. And that's the obsession. 
And so because that keeps coming up, you want to do something that's going to keep that worst case scenario from happening or from being true. And so you do something and that is the compulsion. Um, because like you can't just not, like it's very scary. And so you have to do something and you end up doing that, but you can't prove 100% that that worst case scenario isn't gonna happen or that it isn't true. So you come back around to the obsession again. And as you go on that circle over time, you do more and more compulsions. And those could be physical things like hand washing, but also like checking doorknobs or checking ovens like over and over and over again. Or they can be mental, which almost all of mine are mental. And so you do more and more and more of those and you keep coming around to the obsession because it just keeps coming back up and you do more and more compulsions and it gets smaller and smaller and smaller and more and more and more anxious. And that carves kind of a perfect downward spiral. Um, and it's really easy for OCD to take over someone's life. For some people, it just really, really affects their quality of life. And for some people, you end up kind of at a mental health rock bottom, like yours truly. Um, for me, I, I'd been living with it for a really long time and it was really limiting me. And then life getting really intense, I think just pushed that way more intense than I could have imagined. But yeah, that is that is what that is. And um, I am gonna put some information in the description box because I think more people need to know about this. Um, so it's gonna be down there if you want to know more about it. I highly recommend just looking into it just, just because it needs to be out there more. But for me, one of the things, because OCD usually comes after a lot of things, one of the things that OCD really attacked for me was YouTube and making my content on social media because it's really special to me because I feel like I got so lucky and I, uh, you know, the imposter syndrome is very real. Um, but also like what we've built here, like the community that we have here, it's so special to me. And like the idea of anything bad happening to it is that like deeply disturbing, terrifying feeling. And so I ended up in those loops and I've been doing exposure therapy in order to come back from them. And I started last January with just coming in here in this room, touching my camera. It's literally where I started. And I cried before, I cried after, I had to psych myself up, I had to soothe myself after. It was, God, it was awful. And then I worked on it every single day and I built on it every single day. And by the end of the year, I posted a video. <laughs> And now I'm coming back to posting and I'm so proud of myself. Like I told myself at the beginning of this journey, if I'm able to do this, this will be the bravest thing I've ever done. And it was. Not gonna cry, it's not gonna be one of those videos. If anybody else is on that journey, all my love and <laughs> goodwill and encouragement is with you. It's not easy, but it is worth it. Um, but yeah, and that's also another reason why I'm coming back a little slowly because this is literally still exposure therapy for me. Um, so yeah. And I hope that you guys like see from that how much I love this and how much it means to me because I worked that hard to come back. Um, yeah, okay. We've done enough of that. You guys get it. Um, I'm, <laughs> I'm really proud of myself. I went through a hard time and I'm doing better. And that's like the best thing I could ask for. <laughs> We're moving on to the next question. Carol Trinidade Ferreira asks, for the days when there's no time or energy, what do you do to prioritize hair care and self care in general? And I feel like you read my mind because that's literally the next video I'm posting. Um, I did this video as part of my exposure therapy and I was never sure if I was gonna post it um, because I just needed to practice like filming and editing and like doing everything as if I was going to but I ended up liking it. Um, I did do it several months ago, so like my hair is different and everything. We're going back in time for that, but I wanted to post it, so that's next. I'm excited for it. I hope you guys enjoy it too. Gam1595 said, also we missed you. What's your favorite thing you've been able to do while you've been away? So I'm using this question to answer a slightly different one. I saw somebody ask if I picked up any new hobbies while I was away and they wanted to answer it, but then I couldn't find the question again. <laughs> I have to tell you guys, I am such a DIY girl. I don't know if I've talked about that. I feel like you could assume that about me, but I love, to my core, I am a craft and DIY girly. So I picked up some new ones since I've seen you. I learned how to knit um, and I decided for my very first knitting project that I would make a lover cardigan in the style of the folklore cardigan. And honestly, that was way too intense. 
<laughs> I should not have started that hard. So I did do it and I think it turned out okay, but I've been on a knitting hiatus since then. I've also really gotten into crochet. I have been making like cutie little stuffed animals and giving them to the children in my life. And I keep forgetting to take pictures of them, but I'll show you guys some of them. I also got into micro crochet. I don't know what I was doing with that, but I made a few things out of thread in a 0.5 millimeter hook. I don't know, that, that era might be done for me. <laughs> oh, and Jenna and I raised monarch butterflies last year. And honestly, I got super into it because like we need more pollinators and monarchs are endangered, but also like it was really fun. <laughs> the caterpillars were so cute. I don't know, I, I nerded out hardcore. You guys know I'm a nerd. Um, so yeah, I, I fully recommend it, but I do have to tell you that if you decide to do it, you need a bush of milkweed, like more than you think. Wait, like they, go with what you think and double it. Um, I was going to our local pesticide free nursery and buying more milkweed like every other day. It was insane and way too much money. So learn from my mistakes, but it is really fun. If you're interested, I, I do recommend. I'll put like, if my wife figured out where to get the caterpillars, I would never have known where to start. So I'll put that below in case you guys wanna, I don't know, get into that. Okay, and those are all the questions I'm gonna answer today. I hope that you guys had a good time because I did. Like getting to sit down and just chat and catch up, like making hair videos is my heart and my passion, but like, I don't know, this was really nice. I hope that you guys enjoyed it too. Um, and now I have a question for you. What content do you guys wanna see from me as I come back into uh, posting? And I mean like long form or short form, like whatever you're interested in, like questions you wanna learn about, products you're interested in. First and foremost, I'm making content for you guys. So I will be scouring the comments to see what you guys say because I am very, very, very curious. Cause we have, there's been a lot of stuff to happen since I last saw you, so much ground to cover. So yeah, let me know. I will be looking for your ideas and implementing them as I go. But all that said, I think that that actually is it for today. So whether you're old or new or a casual lurker, thank you for spending time with me and I'll see you in my next video. Mwah. Bye. My brain cannot like work on this side of my head today. I don't understand what's happening. I feel like I've never had hands before. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Not you out here forgetting the heat protector. Kaylee Melissa.